Welcome back to the Late Night News. On to some uh, national news now. Responding to the opposition's claims that the present government had not done enough to tackle price rise in the country, the Finance Minister Pranam Mukherjee today said that the centre and states need to work together to tackle the price rise menace. Speaking in the Lok Sabha, he sought the help of all political parties, including the opposition, to introduce goods and service tax and revamp the PDS. At the same time, he also cited figures to prove that the previous NDA regime was worse off in every sector. I'm a village boy. I studied up to class 10 in the lamp of kerosene. I used to commute my school by walking in today's language, today's terminology, 10 kilometers every day. So I know the life of a villager. Therefore, therefore, therefore I knew it. But my sensitivity, don't ridicule my sensitivity. Well, a very emotional uh, Pranam Babu there. Meanwhile, in the Rajya Sabha, leader of the opposition, Arun Jaitley, criticised the government and its allies. He said the government had not given any statement on the 2G spectrum scam yet. He also said that Tamil Nadu functioned like an island government. Jaitley added whether it was containing inflation or reducing prices, it was like a mirage for the government. Every ally is becoming a power centre. Somebody sits in Kolkata, you can't uh, discipline them. Somebody sits in Chennai and therefore that's an island of governance itself. You can't interfere in those ministries. If this is what is happening to this government, in debate after debate, do we seriously expect the government to come and make a resolution as far as price rise is concerned? A new day, a new twist to the Commonwealth Games UK money trail. A letter has emerged which suggests that some of the rates for services rendered by AM Films in the United Kingdom were manipulated to exorbitant levels. In the midst of all the denials, Organising Committee Chairman Suresh Kalmadi says he's willing to face any sort of scrutiny or judicial probe for all that's being reported in the media. In an email sent by Sanjay Mohindru, a senior official of uh, the Organising Committee, to Art Ashish Patel of the AM Films, it seems to suggest that the organizing committee of the Commonwealth Games was trying to hugely exaggerate rates for something as simple as hiring taxis in London. But uh, Suresh Kalmari now has sworn innocence and he says that he is willing to face a judicial probe. Anusia Mathur, Sports Input Editor with the NDTV 24-7 joined us and spoke to us about whether things are really in fact uh, looking up for the CWG. The letter that we were showing across our NDTV networks uh, today uh, has been sent by a senior official of the organizing committee to AM Films, which seems to suggest that, uh, that they had asked for higher rates to be charged for services provided. So, for example, uh, the letter said you will charge, say, £15,000 for a hire of, uh, of a car across a month. Uh, and so those are gro grossly inflated uh, figures. That's the second charge of corruption, and that's the one that is uh, likely to be addressed tomorrow. There is also the charge against the Delhi government, which is also a stakeholder in these games, that funds from the SCSC uh, fund were diverted uh, towards the games. So there are still some fairly serious charges uh, against the organizers of the Commonwealth Games. And, and uh, you know, what... It, it seems that the coming days might throw up a few more, though, uh, though many of us are hoping that that's not the case. Well, that controversy getting murkier by the day. In the latest from the test at the island nation, after Sri Lanka put on 425 runs in the third test at the P. Sarah Oval in Colombo, it seemed like it would be an uphill task for the Indian batsmen to get past that toe grid. But one man alone can change that, and that's exactly what Virinder Sehwag did as he led India's fight back. But there's still some way to go. The wicket was helping the ball dance and Angelo Matthews failed to hit the right beat. Pragyan Oja getting the reward with Matthews gone for 45. Thilan Samaravira though continued to dominate the Indian bowlers with Amit Mishra being punished in particular. The opposite was happening at the other end as Oja came up with career best figures when he took his fourth wicket of the test. At 3.59 for 6, India were close to finishing things off but Samaravira proved to be the difference. That is a terrific knock. It really is. That's his 12th Test 100. It's his third versus India. 
post-lunch and India struck two quick blows. The first time in this test, first Suraj Randeev and then Lasit Malinga. At 386 for 8, India was thinking of restricting the Lankans to less than 400. But Samaravira continued to torment the Indian bowlers and held the tail together. Ishan Sharma cleaned up the tail, two wickets in four balls and Sri Lanka were 425 all out. India needed to get to 500 and quickly, Virinda Seva clearly looking like the right man for the job. Lasit Malinga was back post-injury and he reminded everyone why he was the man of the match in the first test. Gambhi's substitute, Murli Vijay, gone for 14. Rahul Dravid was uncharacteristically attacking, but Angelo Matthews surprised him with his swing. Sri Lanka on top, with India at 92 for 2. That could have become 98 for 3 if not for this dropped catch. Angelo Matthews giving India's most destructive batsman a life on 52. The turning point in this match. That proved to be the turning point of the day. Sevak dominating again with his 1,000th four in test cricket and route to becoming the second fastest to notch up 7,000 test runs. With Sutton for support, Viru took India to 180 for two before bad light called off play. So, India still in with an outside chance, but clearly it all depends on these two men. Well, perseverance, most of us know, is the key to success. Now, here's an example of a bike racer from Rani Pet who went on to achieve his dreams despite losing a leg when he was just 17. Our sports reporter Sudarshan met him before he left to take part in the Freedom Ride 2010. To dominate the tracks, that was Gopi's dream. But tragedy came in its worst form for this 17-year-old biker from Rani Pet. He lost his leg in an accident in 1988 on the Chennai-Bangalore road. Many thought he would never race again. <laughs> Gopi did hit the tracks again after six months, but he was not the same rider he used to be. With his artificial leg, he was no match for his fellow racers. But he did not lose heart. Instead, he decided to live with his passion for riding by exploring places. Gopi and 14 other riders are now set to ride along the scenic road linking Manali with Leh in the Freedom Ride 2010, organized for bike enthusiasts who want to test their capabilities. Who says one can't make his dream come true if he's a physically challenged? Meet this man from Rani Pate who lost his one leg at the age of just 17, but he never let his determination of becoming a bike racer die. And today, He's all set to participate in Freedom Ride 2010 to discover lay on wheels. In Rani Pate, with camera person Lucas Sudarshan for NDTV Hindu. Well, some success story of a determined biker. Now, the 22nd of August is Madras Day, and that is when we celebrate the beauty and tradition of our lovely city. And we here on NDTV Hindu bring you the tunes and stories surrounding the sights and sounds of our city, which was once Madras. Now, Madras city was once almost synonymous to the famous uh, Madi Sari, the mother of all styles of draping the beautiful Indian Sari. Our senior editor Radhika Ayer met 86 year old Tilay Amal, who is just one of the many parties keeping the tradition alive in Chennai. <laughs> A prayer before a new beginning is a must for Tilay Amal, even if it is a little interview for our camera. Her prayer is not that the interview goes off well, but so that through the interview, the average Tamil woman realizes how graceful her attire is. Unlike a low waist jeans, this elegantly wraps the waist. And who knows that better than this great grandmother to 19 children.
this 86-year-old party started wearing the madasar at the age of 10. Did you say, oh, it's the most complicated attire? Well, this party's simple tip can make you fall in love with it. How you stitch a salwar? Same way I stitched to Madisar ready-made also. So that Madisar put away any devasam or any small festival. I just wear it in a matter of two minutes. Not too many years ago, it was only the Madisar for a woman, as was the Pavaradavani for an adolescent girl. Today, both attires are as rare as each other. Tille Yamal is one of the many her age who has promised to keep the Madisar alive for as long as they are. In fact, this adorable party never has rasam, fearing her waistline would grow, because then the Madisar would not look all that beautiful on her. In Chennai, Radhika Ayer, NDTV Hindu. But I think she'll always and always look beautiful in that beautiful Madisar. So in the run-up to Madras Day, we will bring you special reports from different parts of Chennai. We'll also have a special segment called Picture Madras, where we select a picture sent in by you, the viewer, that best depicts the city, its culture and colour. So you can mail your pictures to feedback at ndtv-hindu.com. Now all of Chennai will uh, become a stage soon. The curtains go up on the Hindu Metro Plus Theatre Festival starting Friday, the 6th of August. Our features editor Anuradha Anand met up with senior associate editor of The Hindu, Mukund Padmanabhan, to find out what we can expect this year. Mukund Padmanabhan, senior associate editor here at The Hindu, who among his various other responsibilities oversees the Metro Plus supplement and organizes the theatre festival every year. Now the festival looks as colourful this year too as it does um, every year. So what can we expect? Well, thank you for saying that. Um, I think what you can expect is eight fairly good place. I think we have possibly the most consistent lineup that we've had in the last six years. And I think this consistency has just come about through a process of trial and error and through, uh, you know, improvements in our own processes about how plays get selected. And you have a blog I see this year. Well, we have many new things this year. I think this year is a kind of watershed for the festival. The festival will travel uh, to other South Indian cities such as Hyderabad, Bangalore and uh, Coimbatore, uh, possibly by the end of the year. We have a blog, we have a, a page uh, on our uh, website. We also have a project lined up where uh, the Metro Plus uh, Theatre Award uh, will go into the form of publication of a book by one of the leading publishers in the country. So we want to create synergies between the festival, the, uh, the award and, uh, and the book. Why don't we see more Chennai plays? There are so many theatre companies here. Right now, under the new format, we have one but there's no bar on that, it can increase to two. But uh, we pay them considerably more and we finance the cost of a new production in its entirety and that's the objective. So I think from the point of view of the fest, it can do one of two things. One is get more Chennai groups and pay them small amounts, amounts similar to that we pay outstation groups which have ongoing productions, so the costs are not great. Or really you know, throw in your financial muscle and back a group. I prefer the latter alternative. It's something that I think the audience also prefers. They would like to see more groups from outside rather than see Chennai, which they're seeing in any case. Well, but I must thank you and congratulate you for bringing this festival to our city year after year. And I would tell all of you, don't miss any of the plays. I haven't missed any of the plays uh, well, from the you. time. I hope you enjoy this one too. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Well, make sure you catch at least one of those or maybe all of them, in fact. This is the Late Night News on NDTV Hindu. I'm Evelyn Matthew. Thanks for watching. Good night.